Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Kulecha and I welcome you. In this video, I am going to share uh, Buddha's uh, a discourse, uh, my understanding from a discourse where Buddha gave advice to Bhadraka on suffering, on the origin and cessation of suffering. So, it is given that Buddha was staying in the land of the Malas near the Malian town called Urvilakappa. There was a uh, Bhadraka who was the village chief. He went up to the Buddha and asked him, uh, please sir, teach me the origin and cessation of suffering. So, uh, please see what Buddha so beautifully says, right? Buddha says, chief, if I were to teach you about the origin and ending of suffering in the past, saying this, this is how it was in the past, you might have doubts or uncertainties about that. If I were to teach you about the origin and ending of suffering in the future, saying that this is how it will be in the future, then you will, then you might have doubts or uncertainties about that. Rather, chief, I will teach you about the origin and ending of suffering as I am sitting right now and you are sitting right here. Listen and apply your mind well. I will speak. So Buddha said, rather than I making, you know, uh, giving you certain concepts like from the past or from the future, which will cause doubts or uncertainties, Buddha Asked for that direct understanding. Right now, right here, I will ask you certain questions and you yourself will, uh, in this present moment, get an idea on the origin and cessation of suffering. So, Buddha, so in this discourse, Buddha asked certain questions to Bhadraka and by the end of the questions, Bhadraka himself realizes the, the origin and cause. Right? So, so, Buddha asks, uh, Buddha asks, what do you think, chief? Uh, are there any people here in Urvala Kappa who, if they were executed, imprisoned, fined or condemned, it will cause you sorrow, lamentation, pain, sadness and distress? So, Bhadrika said yes, mostly referring to his family and near ones, right? If someone from them got executed, imprisonment, imprisoned, so he will feel bad, he will feel sad. Then Buddha's next question was, are there people here in Urv Urvala Kappa who, if they were executed, imprisoned, fined or condemned, it would not cause you sorrow, lamentation, pain, sadness and distress. Vadrika's um, uh, response was, there are, sir. That means he was responding about the people who were strangers, whom did he did not know. So, Buddha asked that Vadrika uh, only, what's the cause, chief? What's the reason why? And if this was to happen to some people, it could cause you sorrow, while it would happen while if it would happen to others, it does not. So, Bhadrika replied, The people regarding whom this would give rise to sorrow are those that I desire and love. The people regarding whom this would not give rise to sorrow are those who I don't desire and love. Right? So, how profound. So, then Buddha said, With this present phenomenon that is seen, known, immediate and attained and, fa and fathomed, you may infer to the past and past and future. All the suffering that arose in the past was rooted in the... So, so Buddha said, now that you have this understanding clear that it is the desire, the love for specific people that is causing you suffering right now. If it were, anyone would have, any one of them would be imprisoned, now go back to the past and in the future. Buddha says, all the suffering that arose in the past was rooted and sourced in desire, in craving, Right, which is the noble noble truth number two. The cause of suffering is desire, craving, and even the underlying cause is ignorance. Ignorance that everything is impermanent, everything is going to change. Right. So Buddha said, uh, all the suffering that arose in the past was rooted and sourced in desire. For desire is the root of suffering. All the suffering that will arise in the future will be rooted and sourced in desire. That means everything that was suffering caused in the past was because of desire. Every suffering that you will generate in future, that will also be caused due to desire. For desire is the root of suffering. So Buddha says, Buddha is giving him a clear picture that in the past you have generated so much suffering because of the desire and in the future, if you choose to, you will continue to generate the suffering. Because if see, friends, if we understand this one thing that it is my desire only which has taken me till here in this present life, in this present life I am suffering. Right? And once I get that clear insight that it is my desire only that has caused so much suffering, then, may, then maybe I can come out of this. Right? I can be engaged in this 
world with all my duties with with in family life i need not go to a forest and all i can be in this world engage in this world but not have desire or craving because i realize somewhere that everything is changing everything is going to change so i will not get attached to any person anything right further so 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 bhadra 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 says bhadrika says it's incredible sir it's amazing so he realized now he realized that you know that the the wisdom uh, eyes got open he says how well said this was this was by the buddha how well said this was by the buddha all the suffering that arises is rooted and sourced in desire for desire is the root of suffering now now uh, uh, he he continues uh, bhadrika continues now because now that he has an understanding he says i have a boy whose name is siravasi who resides in a house far from here i rise early and send someone saying go my man and check on my boy siravasi right so he has because he has this thought, he has this this uh, you know sense of uh, belongingness and attachment with siravasi until they get back i worry ho- i hope nothing is wrong with siravasi i hope nothing is wrong with siravasi right so because of his attachment so buddha says what do you think chief if siravasi was executed imprisoned fined or condemned would it cause you sorrow lamentation pain sadness and distress so bhadrika said how could it not sir it is like, so bhadrika was like saying yes definitely so again buddha said this too is a way to understand all the suffering that arises is rooted and sourced in desire for desire is the root of suffering then uh, buddha said what do you think chief before you had seen or heard of siravasi's mother who was like bhadrika's wife before you had seen or heard you about your wife did you have any desire or love or fondness for her to so bhadrika said no sir so if i don't know my wife before i you know marry marry her, her or something i don't know her till the time i don't have any any desire so if anything happens to her i don't have any kind of remorse and suffering and everything but the moment i know her and have that attachment then everything starts so buddha so then buddha said then was it because you saw or heard of her that you had a desire or love or fondness for her so bhadrika said yes yes once you know her when you know that person when you have that attachment then that craving starts then that suffering starts so buddha said what do you think chief if siravasi's mother was executed imprisonment fined or condemned would it cause you sorrow lamentation pain sadness distress bhadrika said yes absolutely so again so in this discourse is what happens buddha repeats lot of things so that it goes in our mind right so again so that's why i will also repeat the whole uh, thing for all of us uh, you know you me everyone so that we get the message this too is a way to understand all the suffering that arises is rooted and sourced in desire for desire is the root of suffering so what so how we should live our life right so from just my perspective being a householder having wife and two kids what i understand that i will live my life a uh, a uh, fully loving and caring as a husband as a father but being detached because i know that you know there is something which very well something very nice that i read somewhere we are all guests right in this this, this is maybe a hotel and everyone is coming and going we are all guests so till the small time that we have the company of each other we will give our love unconditional love to each other not have attachments on how the other person should behave behave my love will be totally unconditional for them unconditional for them and i will try not to base my own opinions and you know everything on my children and on my wife try to live light no not create too many expectations and just give love not demand not hold and have that underlying uh, understanding that everything is changing like uh, if you see the buddha's five remembrances one of the remembrances buddha buddha asked every one of us to keep remembering is that uh, at one point we will all be separated from each other i will be separated from my loved ones so we need to keep that so it's not pessimistic it's basically reality right buddha's teaching we think some people think that it is pessimistic no it is basic re- reality this is how things are the our fact that we create a you know, lot of you know uh, rosy things around the re- this reality is the cause of our conflict so we need to uh, 
be very mindful of our relationships are we developing kind of obsession or are we creating some kind of a imposing behavior or attachment in that relationship if yes we need to reduce diffuse right release all the cravings because this becomes our barrier to our liberation right so so this was it i hope this uh, uh, this uh, uh, this discourse what was there this uh, that i have discussed here was useful please do share your thoughts comments feedback what is your thought on this, this discourse right uh, uh, and please also do reflect on this this teaching by the buddha and uh, uh, thank you so much. and the and the detailed the link of the this, this the detailed text of the discourse is given in the link below so you can check it out thank you so much namo buddhaya namo buddhaya namo buddhaya